willing to come public with some of the struggles he's gone through? He's just an amazing guy. I mean, he he brings so much joy to so many people around him, and um, you know, it's not real surprising to me that he wants to help uh, anybody in that situation. And I tell you what, man, I'm I'm really blessed to have him in my life. He's a he's a great guy. All right. Well, <laughs> good to see you guys. Thanks, sir. <laughs> I thought it was improvement maybe from one week to the next in the run game. What you, would you like, maybe what needs to continue to improve for your pass production? Yeah, we're just scratching the surface. You know, I think uh, I think the guys are, are seeing some uh, close runs. You know, I think, I think we're real close to getting to some more efficient runs and some more explosive runs. Uh, just got to stay at it, stay committed, stay urgent. Uh, you know, to the little details of our run scheme, uh, seeing progress in it, seeing guys getting attached to blocks with the perfect, uh, you know, proper, not perfect, proper leverage, um, you know, and guys starting to hit their run tracks a little bit more consistently, uh, you know, but we're, uh, you know, we're always looking for ways to improve and we need to. Talked about uh, at times where he may have to, you know, be somewhat of a decoy for someone else and how he's willing to do that again for you as a play caller. Is it tough to kind of like balance that where, you know, I want to use him as a decoy here, but he's so talented, so I want to make sure I get him the football? Sure. I think that's always the the recipe you're trying to figure out, right? You know, um, he certainly garners a lot of attention with how much talent he has. Uh, we're just fortunate that he's such a selfless player, you know, and he's willing to do anything we ask him to do. And, and sometimes that's uh, to carry a heavy, heavy load. And sometimes that's to, uh, you know, make sure he's taking a couple defenders the other way with him. So... Uh, you know, fortunate to have a tool like that to be able to use in different ways. How much was was it decoy, or how much did did Lattimore and uh, and Ramsey do do good work against him, or force force him maybe to go other places? I mean, that's a very talented defense. You know, very talented defense. They got a lot of uh, talent in that back end in particular, and and certainly the you know the front doesn't give you very much time to to get anything long developing off. Um, you know, but. Obviously, it opened up some opportunities for other people and created one-on-ones for other people. I was really proud of Marcus and the way he stepped up and uh, kind of translated some of the things that we've talked about with his practice habits now into game production. Uh, and so that's always going to be that balance, is finding uh, you know, what they're trying to do defensively uh, versus what opportunities that creates for other people. What personal effect did they mention Marcus? Because, you know, was that – was the fact that they were looking at AJ kind of the, the the main reason that Marcus had that big game, or what what else went into Marcus's big game? Then? You know, I, I I don't want to discredit Marcus Marcus's work by saying that it it was what they did with AJ. Marcus has been working his tail off, and uh, you know I I want to attribute his success to the fact that he stayed with it. He's stayed confident in himself. He's remained committed to doing the little things right, and then he made the most of his opportunities. And that's the name of this game. You know, when you have an opportunity to make a play. You've got to make the play, and, and he did uh, on Sunday. And so I think it's a you know confidence boost for a lot of people that hey, when your number's called, doesn't matter who you are out there, Ryan's going to find you, and uh, and you got to produce. Bob, you did work with Ryan obviously the last couple of years, but but in the role you're in now, do you have a new understanding, appreciation for for what he's brought to this offense? Yeah, I, I think I said this uh, a couple weeks ago. The shame of it is Ryan's stats aren't telling the story of Ryan's season. He is having a much better season uh, than statistic, you know, statistical rankings. He's extremely tough, not just physically, but his mindset. He's consistent. He's the same guy in here every single day. He works his tail off. He, you know, he's staying late, which quarterbacks do. Uh, you know, and, and I'm just again really fortunate, honored, and, and blessed to be working with him. Uh, you know, running this offense because you couldn't ask for a more high character guy uh, and a tougher guy to be leading this offense on the field. There's so much turnover, obviously, in the injuries and replacing guys like Derek and Julio. I mean, how important has Ryan been and will continue to be to what you're trying to do? Yeah, I mean, that consistency, right, is is what we're leaning on, right? Is his, knowing who he is and his play style and and what he brings to the table and and being able to depend on that week in and week out. Uh, you know, makes it a little bit more palatable to to deal with some moving parts elsewhere. And, uh, you know, a, again, very fortunate to have him uh, leading out there. And, and I think that when the guys step into that huddle and see his face, uh, they know we got a chance. A lot of the same guys at tight end, but sort of different roles this year without John New. How, how uh, I guess, how clear is everybody's role now in that group as a compared to maybe the start of the season. Yeah, I think versatility is such a key factor at the tight end position, being able to do multiple jobs. 
so that you're not pigeonholed by personnel groupings, you know, and, and those guys have really embodied that this year, you know, in, in the past couple of years with Janu, he had kind of the things he was really good at and, and, you know, excelled at. And so you wanted to make sure that he was in there for those, those type of plays. And I think the guys have shown uh, a good versatility. You know, we're growing each week. We got to get more consistent in the run game and in our pass protection with those guys. I think they've taken advantage of some opportunities in the pass game. Uh, but still a lot of room for growth and, and uh, you know, pleased that they're taking the mindset of not being satisfied where they're at. Catch has always been a, a real big part of AJ's game in the first couple seasons. I haven't seen as much uh, that this year. You know, are, are there reasons or two or is it or, or, you know, hard to figure or what, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, that that's one of those things that uh, is a little bit like we talked about with the red zone a few weeks ago. It just takes one or two plays. It's kind of like the indie game a few weeks ago, right? Uh, nobody thought that a, a corner route for you know a twelve yard completion was going to turn into a you know long touchdown. So um, you know once he gets his opportunities, he comes to life, and and I think that those are you know real close um, you know to popping. How does Rabel handle the organizational aspect of being a head coach in terms of putting you all and the players in position to succeed and, and sort of being on the same page throughout the week? Yeah, his incredible leadership and consistency. He he paints a, a great picture for us of what it's going to take to win games, uh, and and then holds us to that standard. You know, and and that's uh, that's all you could ever ask for out of a head coach. Is tell me what you need from me to help this team win, and then hold me accountable to doing it. And uh, and he certainly does those things. So uh, learning a lot from him, and and certainly very fortunate to have the opportunity to work for him. How about the success do you think too is his relationship with the players? We've talked about. Their ability to open up to him a little bit. I mean, do you, do you sense that when you're around this team? Yeah, you know, I think he has such a wealth of experience, you know, in, in certainly different roles in this league. Um, but he's been around this game for a long time uh, and, and met a lot of different uh, walks of life. And I think that that helps people, uh, you know, hopefully it's it's been an asset to me, you know, of being able to meet people from different upbringings and different challenges and going through different life experiences. And, and I, I see Coach Vrabel, uh, take that to his relationship with the players, and they know that uh, you know he has those experiences, and he can rely on some wisdom from ways that he's either seen it done before or done it himself before. Uh, and, and certainly, that builds a, a trust and a confidence in being able to talk through some of those things with him. You guys, like what you guys like about uh, Dante Foreman so much that you decided to bring him back? Was it the familiarity with the system, or were there certain skills in particular, like uh, despite the fact he hadn't played? You know, too much this year. Yeah, I think a, n a number of things. You know, he does have familiarity with the system, and certainly he was down there. Uh, you know, with Arthur in Atlanta, and so uh, staying in the same kind of scheme. But he also showed some flashes of you know really good stuff last year, Cincinnati game. You know, and, and uh, you know catching the ball out of backfield a little bit. He had the touchdown. I think it was against Indianapolis last year, and uh, you know so he showed a skill set that was intriguing enough to uh, to work with. So. We're excited about where he's at, and he's trending in the right direction, getting more and more comfortable. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll see what he can do with uh, with opportunities.